our longest trusted English newspaper since 1898. Now available digitally. Computer, order the Manila Times Digital Edition. Subscribed. Get the Manila Times Digital Edition for less than 2 pesos and 50 centavos per day when you sign up for one year. The Manila Times, new source of choice, trusted since 1898. Welcome. Thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times for Wednesday, May 11, 2022. For today's editorial, a wake-up call from Sri Lanka. While everyone here in the Philippines was quite understandably focused on our own tumultuous election on Monday, the nation of Sri Lanka was tearing itself apart. The drama happening there is worth paying attention to because of some disturbing similarities, or at least potential similarities, between the Sri Lankan situation and that of the Philippines. Sri Lanka's crisis was tipped into serious upheaval by the COVID-19 pandemic. But in reality, the pressure has been building for several years. The pandemic virtually wiped out revenues from tourism and remittances, both of which are even bigger contributors to the Sri Lankan economy than they are here in the Philippines. This starved the country of badly needed foreign currency to pay off its ballooning debt, much of it to China under less than the favorable terms, and forced the government to ban a large number of imports. Unfortunately, this was a proverbial between a rock and a hard place situation for Sri Lanka because it is heavily dependent on imports of basic commodities such as fuel and fertilizer. The import bans led to severe shortages of food and other basic goods, runaway inflation, and lengthy power blackouts. Other economic measures to try to bring the deteriorating situation under control simply seemed to make matters worse. And by April, the government was forced into defaulting on its $51 billion foreign debt. Again, that was not a sudden problem. Back in 2017, Sri Lanka famously defaulted on loan payments for the construction of the Chinese-built Hambantota port in the south of the country, in the hometown of the ruling Nyayapaksa family. The settlement forced Sri Lanka to hand over a 70% stake to China Merchants Port Holdings Company Limited or CM Port, a state-owned Chinese firm, and give CM Port a 99-year lease on operating the port for the ridiculously low sum of $1.2 billion. In February, it was revealed that the lease agreement has a clause allowing the term to be extended for an additional 99 years, potentially giving China control of the critical infrastructure until the year 2215. Growing protests over the past couple of weeks culminated in the government imposing a sweeping state of emergency last Friday, which was the trigger for Monday's violence in which at least five people were killed including a ruling party member of parliament who reported shot two protesters and then himself, and more than 180 injured. The country's prime minister, Mahinda Nyapaksa, resigned later in the day to try to appease the protesters, but not before his own house in Hambantota and a hotel owned by a Nyapaksa crony were burned down by rioters. Why all of this news should be a bit suffering for the Philippines can be easily summarized. Sri Lanka is dominated by a few entrenched political clans. Mahinda Nyayapaksa's younger brother Gotabaya is the current president of Sri Lanka and the two simply swapped positions at the last election. For years since the end of the Tamil rebellion in 2009, successive governments have pursued unsustainable populist economic policies to keep its restive, impoverished population calm, rocking up huge foreign debts in the process. Finally, repression of dissent by the government has become the rule rather than the exception and increasingly carried out through proxy civilian supporters both online and on the street. The riots in the capital, Colombo, and other cities on Monday were actually started by government supporters attacking opposition protesters who chose to stand their ground this time. 
the new administration in the Philippines should take care not to make the same mistakes as Sri Lanka's leaders, given that there are similar circumstances here. An inordinate amount of clan dominance in politics, economic circumstances that tempt unwise quick-fix solutions such as subsidies and price controls, and considerable business entanglements with China. None of these things necessarily have to lead to the same kind of trouble, but without diligent effort on the leadership's part, they very well could. And that's the editorial for Wednesday, May 11, 2022. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And listen to the Voice of the Times.